Nashindwa ni gonge wapi wa kurugenzi. <laughs> anyway, wa kurugenzi mambo vipi wa dawa? I hope mko fresh maze. Hata mimi niko fresh kuruka, mambo ina ni nice tu hapa mdogo mdogo. Leo bana we are doing things a little bit uh, different. Um last couple of weeks bana imekuwa heavy for some of us na uwezi wa laumu. Bana unatandikwa left right and center. Yaani ushamalizana tu na landlord hivi kidogo kidogo oh sijui ex wako amesema oh anataka sijui umrudishie ngombe hata ujamalizana na ex wako ndio hiyo bei ya unga imeenda mali inataka ah it's too much man it's too much but um i think to come to discover no man is an island man hapa ndio tupenye bana lazima lazima tuongeleshane maze lazima bana we need to rely on each other whether we like it or not sisi we are social beings bana hakuna mtu hapa anakaa peke yake kama penguin nimewachwa no tu lazima tu eh hey, mazena leo nimesema nataka ku especially for those people when you anafikiria mazee bana there can't be anything good in life anymore nataka tu niwaonyeshe mazee first of all huko peke yako uh, secondly kuna wasee wana go through so much more and thirdly ya kwamba despite anything you're going through mazere tukishikana tu si wote utapenya lazima tu utapenya man na to help me do that mazere leo niko na rafiki yangu bana ndaka tupige na ye story hapa kidogo mazere ni, ni boy ambe go through a lot bana this is the king of survival buda hii yako ni touch jo tunafuata kutengeneza tu ministry the ministry of survival na upati CS hapo quick sababu mazee ame go through a lot but ako na sisi hapa 10 years ago alikuwa diagnosed na cancer mazee and the thing that that disease has shown him over that decade it's a miracle mazee uko na sisi lakini bwana amejipiga moyo konde taka tusikize tu story yake kidogo eh ndio wale wako nyumbani wanafikiria mazee it can never be worse than it is bra watu wanakapitia mazee so tujipige moyo konde tusikume ama vipi mtu wangu Anaitwa Omondi Ochuka maze Omondi mambo vipi mtu wangu uko fresh First of all hata kabla tuingie kwa meeting Ochuka iko na any unaona mali naenda Kuna any relations na the famous Ochuka Ili check episode yako ya Uliona Air Force Yeah yeah Ezekiel is my uncle That's your uncle on my mom's side Oh wallahi Maze I know it's sad but mna feelaje maze family yenu ndio ilikuwa na the last person kuko executed ilikuwa <laughs> <laughs> na a bit of mixed emotions I know man cuz una check in african culture like yeah. mtu wa kidedi na mjui ali kama linda na river ama mjui alienda api correct usually wanafanya gadami dami funeral yes 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 funda hivyo mgomba mgomba ya ndizi so as much as unajua kuna kuna yongo ya legal yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's treason yeah and uh, the law took its toll I but agree. as a family we feel like this was a part of us ah. and it's been quite an, an extensive period of yeah legal battle actually uh, 40 years tangu kuu ya yeah. yeah. kulikuwa na hiyo ni hiyo report ya JRC yes. what we gonna meeting aga kanu in Kisumu yeah we had a series of meetings with lawyers okay. trying to baby brings the remains the remains back home oh wait <laughs> like aku let her home aku let her home nobody knows where he's buried to date yeah hey that's news man you just gonna do it it's easy oh nobody knows where he's buried oh yeah, yeah. although is that usually the case in death row inmates who are going to commit i don't know why this is a different case uh, yeah, cuz usually they they yeah, taken home yeah, they taken home allah no. okay i didn't know mm-hmm. anyway ah uh, hiyo ilikuwa mambo ya 82, 82. sasa <laughs> wacha turudi yeah karibu close okay, maze. yeah so around 20 was it 2011 2012 so ukiwa 19 ulikuwa hapa 19 yeah, november 19. any november of your 19 year 19 nilikuwa Kenya Institute of Mass Communication November yeah. kwa chini eh nilikuwa first year <laughs> okay KMC maze eh so me 2011 November mm. on 11th yeah niko chuo mini 19 time kasa hii tu eh tunapiga gumu za fivyo lecture na after lecture nje Gandhi wing for you and to eh ni Friday yeah. so watu 
watu wanaenda mali tofauti tofauti kweli eh, but kuna wagana kale kale ka chit chat eh. before like eh, vitu ziende places zinaenda so kuna like ah uh, ni aje ni aje mimi nitaenda konti yangu kuna bash wapi eh ni nini and then that's the last thing i remember what do you mean the last thing nakuja hapo i wake up the following day eh yeah. najipata kwa environment tofauti eh yeah. si chuo lakini una mahospitali na ward ah una kate sensi zangu zinarudi na hapa ina kaho si asa tena sana kuja eh relax relax ulileta pivi na marafiki zako yeah. toka chuo will collapse ah yeah okay. so atujui pia sisi shida yako iko wapi lakini we want to do a thorough extensive uh, medical scan na test yeah. to do what's wrong with you ana ni visa ulikuwa na fit poa ulikuwa ulikuwa aje before before hiki to happen mimi kwa mimi niko sawa yeah because i don't remember i literally don't remember whether i was feeling headache or fever or joint pain or kitu kaya niko sawa one moment you okay yeah. the other moment you in the hospital yeah. or what yeah. okay. sometimes na kuna uliza gawat watu huchi ora the writers yeah. ukifungua right ms word yes kuna kale ka blinking into precursor yeah yeah, yeah so before that yeah. story yako ilikuwa nini kweli so your date ndo in a separate life yangu when i was a young boy in college in first year yeah hoping to be a professor by 27 or 28 yes kuna life yako mpanga and then na kuja na alter hiyo na ta script we so nambiwa uko si this is a garkan a garkan hospital yeah as i try to struggle to read the name the name that you see is your own poor but oh. uh, relax too eh ona ko bena nini hapa inaandikwa a g a k u h s akuni yes so uh, they tell me to relax unafanya all they can to determine what's, what's what could be the problem but i don't look okay i look yellow or you jaundiced ah yeah they, they are su- you know suspecting something with the liver my vitals are not okay so they tell me ah we chill tuta nitakuita doc this is at 10 am the following on saturday yeah tutaki ya doc doc akikuja roundi zake around 11 na 12 tutaongea na yeye so doc anakuja uh, ananiambia i but that miss you but you don't look okay your vitals are um, shutting down yeah and we have to be really speedy with the all we can do yeah. to try and determine and maybe even have a diagnosis so mimi me chill and he must cry zangu and everything is just like a standstill because to react me propose kuna watch kwa tail episode fulani kwa minute fulani niko pause yeah. unangoja eh yeah. vile mimi nafanya yeah. doc yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. uh-huh. so um watikuja wanasema obviously kuna maswali una faulizwe mm. umeangalia test zao na eh hey, mzee this guy the liver is extended when a liver is extended it's bigger ah. you can even feel it yeah. And it uh, the scan shows it has lesions like kaiko kuna blisters. Mm. So they are suspecting liver disease or cancer. But lazima wako grid kidogo. Ah. Kunyo. Eh. Eh. Na tei na narcotics? No. No. Are you sure they go back? Yeah. Are you sure you're telling us the truth and like yeah, I've never drunk, I've never had any alcohol, I've never smoked in my life. Yeah. That's the truth. So they say um okay we'll call the psychologist akuje aku brief ni nini and then they tell me our first uh, suspect is liver cancer. Yeah. We were suspecting liver cirrhosis but you told us you don't drink and you don't so there's no reason to suspect that anymore. We we'll yeah. rule that out. But we haven't no stage yet. So we have to wait for a deeper test, liver function test and then do a stage 1 any iko we have stage gap. So that had to wait until on 17th. So on 17th of November 2011 I'm officially a cancer survivor because wow. the moment you were diagnosed yes you become a survivor immediately immediately way yes so hey, hey that's imekuaje ni kutoka hiyo 17th mpaka sai umepitia nini hiyo hiyo miaka kumi yeah, imekuwa imekuwa ngori you see vitu kai hizo zinakuwa zinatoka life life altering life, yeah. life altering events zinakuja zina change life yako vile ukua expect yeah. ucheke zile ma plot twist wacha yeah. na hiyo sahi so 
in 2012 bado una struggle because you still have ni kama ni trauma when you hit by trauma traumatic event you still kind of stuck in your old ways yeah. you still want to go through school hata una idea ya kudifa yeah so sahi niko kwa ngori and then the first thing is we can't have a surgery which is one of the best options when you have a liver cancer mm. uh, cuz your tumor yenyewe iko kwa a very critical place really? waki do knife hivi yeah. chances of remaining in the OR is high normal so they say what we do we have to do chemo for an extensive period of time let's mm. say 12 sessions of chemo yeah. and radio, radiotherapy ndo your tumor it, it reduce size mm. it can reduce size then we we'll do what is called a resection or do a transplant wow nele yeah. so immediately i mean the chemo a week later nyule yangu imeanguka nimekonda like in a span of 3 weeks nilikuwa nime lose about 20 kg wow you don't see it happening yeah but people looking at you say it's kind of like you blink and then you see your chuka is a different person Three weeks yes Eish. so nilikuwa na afro kidogo back back in the day I had a very nice afro so uh-huh. it was something like it was an identity ah. so usually when something takes your identity out yeah. you you, be, you begin to resist deny and all that Quelly. so ni kama grief is also coming in into the journey yeah. you begin to realize my this is easy and that way anymore so ni kadifa ah eh, so wenzangu wanaenda tuo uko hosi una kimo first year yeah, niko first year all right and then to little fukakuja mm. it was bad it was bad i got into coma wow yeah how long for 47 days wow 47 days i remember vile niko nimeamka i i was seeing my grandmother's ring that is the first thing i noticed your grandmother's ring oh, wedding ring okay ring yeah, yeah. so alikome shika mkono mm. Because that is the last thing I remember the first thing I remember when I woke up. Mm-hmm. I don't remember in between. Just mm-hmm. the same as I don't remember when I went to the hospital. To the hospital yeah. 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 And then after that tena nika ikakuja towards the end of 2012 it got a, li- a little better. I went back to school because yeah. I was like lazima ni malize tour. Like school was very important to me. Ah uh, then towards the, uh, around December January 2013 then again I uh, went back to Hosi. Uh, so that, then the the chapwa ka stroke yeah. on my right side I'm sure you saw the yeah, crash yeah. yeah so you walking up yeah so I was bedridden in the hospital for 13 months I was completely dependent you don't do shit you know you don't remember people eh yeah. uh, because a kuna part of some poetry I wrote where I was people were waiting home like yeah. okay 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 sikia tu yani una nuru fulani imetokea around that place you know it's it's me Where? it was that bad so like you were hanging in the balance and that there is no hope yeah the joga to where and takwa takwa next next Way. but then you see cancer is very funny it's it's a known and off thing mm. especially if you have a, a, a spirited fight in it yeah. you struggle you want to go back to your life you want to do the things that make you make you heart burn yeah you want to make an impact you want to make something out of your life So I was still determined what I need to In fact when I was still having chemo during 2013 yeah nilikuwa bado bado niko bado na narudi chuo na soma in the evening uh, but then uh, 2013 nikaenda The funny thing is when I was getting diagnosed I had just lost my girlfriend Wow And it's funny because I was a young father and oh, we had a baby at the time we had twins Allah? Yes, we had twins. Yeah. My girlfriend then was um she had sickle cell anemia. Oh, so so we survived, but one of the twins, the elder one was still born. Ah. And the second one uh, went into the incubator. Okay. So I'm a young person uh. going through life, going through school, and back at home I have a lady who's taking care of my young baby wait who had the sickle cell anemia my your wife or, or my the other girlfriend yes. or not the kids yeah not the kids ah uh, okay but one of the twins was yeah, s- she was still born still born then yes. the other one was uh, okay yes mm. so i think between 2010 and 2012 mm. is such an intense period for my life sometimes you can't believe you don't believe it yeah yeah don't believe it and then you know sometimes i imagine that 
Life your boy binadamu on the precipice. You're just hanging. You don't notice it. Yeah. Each one, all of us here, we don't notice it. Yeah. But tuna kuna kwa tuna angidi tu mali flani. Kweli. An event ineza kudza kurushe kudza the edge completely. No wende evil. No wende evil. So we are living within an edge of our lives. Yes. Hey, okay. So going forward, 2014 Garudi and I knew, ah, this time it's getting better. Actually, I'd improved the chemo. I was, I was um, responding well to the chemo regimen that I was having. Yeah. The tumors were reducing in size. I had a good time. I was hopeful. Yeah. You see, before that, I was dejected. I was lonely. I was isolated. But then 2014 comes, you're feeling like, ah, finally, finally, I'm getting better. And then it hits back again, and then it starts to spread. Wow. So uh, before you start to ku like the closest people, your friends, your family. Yeah, sometimes you stay with your friends. Imagine at that point, mm. most of my friends had already graduated. So I used ah, to crash at their place, on a couch. But I'm also a very sensitive person, so mm. I usually don't like being burdened some to my friends. Mm. So I used to chill for a week. Yeah. So I used to chill for a week. Yeah, 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 I used to chill for a week. No, when do you chill? Yeah, when do you chill? Yeah, because you own your life, you own your life, and you own your life. Feel I am too much for this person. Yeah. So you move to the next friend, then to the next friend. So he Kanairo has been very difficult. There's a day, Sasa, I had exhausted my list of friends. Mm. So I I was from the hospital in KNH. I was very feeble. I was like a jump of line. So I back then I think we come and say, "Yo, yo, ki footbridge ya UN." Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So nika nika chila po na machokosh. What? I remember that day, it was on um, 13th of March, 2015. And I, had chilled, I was chilling with these chokuras in the story. One of them, I was going to have to in his easy papers. I was to have to use it, you know, and I was going to have to use it. So, I was going to have to use it, prof. And you can't even put it in your mouth. You can't even put it in your mouth. Yes. And you can't even put it in your mouth. So, we've got a bond. Sometimes people ask you, how come people don't have a home? Or you can check it out. You can check it out. You can check it out. A relative, nothing. So, it kind of made sense for me because I had a home to go to, yeah. but I was afraid. I came home with my nanya, my grandma would be would be so dejected. Um, I'm one person who they they hoped for. Yeah. I was a big hope. I was a big light in my family. But Good. then this is now happening. So I feel like I'm not responsible to be shield of the pain I'm going through. Yeah. I have a home to go to, but I'm remembering ah. Acha ni tuni struggle ni Nairobi ndo tutamek. Home ni wapi? Home ni Nyakachi. Nyakachi. Eh, basi ni tonya bondo. Eh, so home. Okay. So I I I have exhausted in my in my head I've exhausted all the list of friends I could go back to. I'm now a street person. Yeah. The only option imebaki ni kupanda mbukinyani in the home. Unaelea? Yeah. I have meds kwa brown paper bag and nilikuwa nimepewa prescription. Yeah. Nakuka jumpa, and I have new made friends, totally strangers. Paliko street. Yeah, Paliko street. Na ido ya meds una toa hapi? Do ya meds kitambo nilikuwa nafanya writing. Oh, oh, yeah. Nilikuwa nafanya writing, na lafu inecha ya pili, nilikuwa nakuja, nakupu kidogo. Yes, yes, yes. And then sometimes friends will show up for you. Yeah. So at least nilikuwa na manage pole pole, but most of the times I had to go without meds. Where? Yes. So that day made me go home because you realize the only gate in is your grandmother's home yeah so i i i had 900 bob remaining i think it was around 950 mm. i remember i think that person is still there i don't i don't know i think but ah, is a God, person ask. with disability and oh yeah 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 I said, my baby, I'm going to finish at home. I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, I'm going to be able to find a bike in the home. So many people don't know why I went home. 
I went home to die. What? Yes, because the prognosis was very poor. And then all the options available nikona akuna. Mm. And when I was getting diagnosed, I had no idea of any person who's ever survived more than a year. Nikona siga tu na nili pata cancer one year, two months, one month or meenda or meenda. So nikona joga tu yangu is just a, just yeah. around the corner. At this point, you yeah. almost clocking two yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, I've already clocked two years. Yeah. And then within nikona on, I'm not getting treatment, so there is no way we are going to remedy it. So the only place you could you may back in in Tanzania ni in kuni nde home. So I went home to die. Wow. And uh, I didn't die, of course. Wait. <laughs> It's a funny event that happened at home. Uh-huh. So it was just me and grandma most of the time unless the other cousins were available during school holidays. So napenda sana kuchunga kuchunga ngome. It's a very philosophical thing. Uh-huh. I was very weak but I wanted to just do something because yeah. the moment ni kikachini The grandmother is worried. I don't want that. So ni kwa nachukua ngombe around 10 na ndara narudi around 3. Eh no kwa maji. So on this day is kurudi. I had a convulsion. Uh, and yeah. then our home is in a plateau. It's hilly. Uh, yeah. So I went up here. <coughs> so me I had a convulsion and it's clocking almost 6 p.m. My grandmother is worried sick like what happened to this guy? Yeah. So akatumba mtu The funny thing is when they came they told me one of the cows that had recently given birth was licking my forehead uh-huh. they refused to go home so if they had gone home nobody would have known where i am ah uh, yeah 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 and then i told you about dates this date this particular date now separates me from reimagining going back to treatment yeah because that's the point, moment i realized hey by the way ndo missi jezi but maybe if I speak out yeah. because remember at this time only very few people knew I was having cancer family and maybe close friends yeah. in fact some of my classmates were gonna do what nini may happen because ngori tu imetokea is no longer in class and pika kuna ko gaje niko poa so nobody knows i had never spoken about my story publicly but now there's a moment that i have an opportunity to actually speak about it yeah. not just to to get help but also just speak about it correct never so they say ah but say people are going to india around that time but around 2015 there was a lot of migration like medical tourism towards india people are going to india a lot oh, yes. so that's the people asking me now how about to find a fundraising to mm-hmm. india yeah. i'm like nah nimeomba sana mzee si 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 fanya kitu kaiyo tena mzee eh because we share your bank paka mba abin The next time when I scroll through your phone unana eh umemaliza yeah fine it's a little chill it's a little chill so you place but ideally at some point you have to soften enough especially when you need help yeah when you need help the only thing that separates you from getting that help is mm. actually speaking out mm. it's one of the hardest things anybody can ever do especially if you've uh, if you've ever asked for help before yeah. but i had to so we come back to Uh, to Nairobi on an ambulance mm-hmm. because uh, Russia it's, it's a hospital called Russia it's called Jaramagi teaching a referral hospital yeah. they couldn't handle my case ah. so take a take in like ambulance na rudishwa KNH where so family and friends are saying no this thing now needs a serious attention mm-hmm. maybe we've not given it a serious attention we need to do something mm-hmm. a friend of mine calls me it's called Odur Jagero he's an author Jagero calls me and says we want to do a fun drive for you Yeah. And uh, what do you think about it? What do you think the tagline is going to be? Then I said, uh, we will win. Good. Yeah. And he he is is kind of stuttering and is asking me why we. And then I said, at this point I don't think my story is my own. Mm. You know. And I remember a conversation I had when my daughter, my daughter lives um, with a family in in uh, in Sweden. <coughs> ah, okay. So at this point she'd started talking we'd, we'd started talking mm. I was also navigating fatherhood mm. and also a very serious situation and circumstances how to navigate that with your child yeah she's 11 now yeah she's 11 now yeah so she gets to tell me why, why don't you you always tell tell me good stories why don't you tell this story to people too yeah. and I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm deep down I'm convicted that I can't tell it but then somebody so young so little is seeing sense in you sharing your story correct so I 
Mm. And I have to tell the story. Mm. So 2015, around that before December, we start conceptualizing the whole thing. I had a group of artist friends um, in the poetry circle, mm. some of them are actors. So they came through and we did what was called We Will Win. Nice. Yeah, it was a concert. It happened at ACK. Uh, the funny thing is, this story didn't go so well as we had imagined because when it was when we were to go to India, yeah. our quotation was 4.7 million. Where? And we've done almost six months of preparations and 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 arambes and all that. Yeah. And we've only managed 465,000. That's like a tenth. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then in 2016, Sasa, it's it's around this time October 2016. Yeah, it's peak time. Yes. So if you travel around this time, it's expensive. It's expensive. So I traveled with my mom. We already took 330k for flight. Wow. To Lubakina. So so. <laughs> life keeps on. Kuna two odds na odds na odds. Yeah. As it break even, kabisa. Funny enough, at this point I had had worked um, as an intern mm. at APA. Ah, yes, yeah. I talked to this guy. I told them I've worked here. In fact, I had hoped one day I'd work here as mm. a CEO sometime. Yeah. So na joko asuka. Lazima you have to like you know. Lazima you just have to drop yourself down. Okay, true. Yeah. So. APA. APA of course, lah. Yeah. They, they yeah. just tell me um. Chill, chill, we'll talk about it with the, the management and then we'll let you know. But we can't promise anything. Mm. The funny thing is, we traveled to India with 112,000. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I remember to Tudifika around 10, to Chicago airport. Yeah. Is this vast Delhi was like. Shego naga, yeah, Delhi. Yeah. Shego naga, radio kitoa zile see. Oh yes, so bad. Niko na yanga leivi. Eh, niko na yanga leivi. Nta bakiu ku amanda rudi. To Berlin, I didn't talk to my mother for two days. And you were together. Yes. For the third day, mm. I get a call from a PA. Nice. He tell me. We've granted you 1.8 million. Wow. I hope that will be enough for you. The fourth day, my doctor, I've been talking to my doctor, the surgeon, for a long time, almost four months. Yeah. He tells me, how come she didn't tell me you want, you're doing you're doing a fundraising? I'm going to cut my cut cut my fee by, by half. What? And I'm going to ask my colleagues to do the same. Yeah. And then miracles happened. I was admitted at Apollo Hospital mm. and then later on to JP. We had our phase one treatment. We were supposed to have three phases. So I was to do the phase one and then come back and then go back later on for phase two. Phase three was supposed to be done here. Unfortunately, we didn't go for the second and the third phase. Ah. So in Mebaki, in Merudi 2017, yeah. I took almost eight, seven and a half months in India. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so Nikirudi, you're getting back to a life that you don't know anything about. Things have changed, a lot of things are happening, more cancer cases. Yeah. You're still struggling. I should go back to school. The funny thing is, I'm on a wheelchair. At this point. At this point. So that means you are highly dependent on care. Yeah. But I was determined. I had a very supportive girlfriend back then. She took me in. Wow. We struggled through that until the point where I was able to go to school. Uh -huh. I remember she used to take me to school every morning for my lecture and come back for me yeah. for the same time. And then you realize this story, I'm not, it's bigger than me now. Yeah. And that's the point I started doing more advocacy, trying to talk to people during counting and screening, I was more relaxed and more ready to share my story. Yeah. It was hard, yes, very hard still, because we had a heap of loans. In fact, 
Two months after we got back, mm. the auctioneers were knocking at our door. I remember they took one of our dairy cows, which was heavily pregnant, I think almost two, two months ready. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching it, it helplessly. You can and, and you feel like you caused it. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is what could have remained for us, but then now it's gone. So we come back to a heap of debt. We come back to a, a heap of stigma because you're trying to undo the stigma as well. You're also trying to, you know, defeat the PTSD because PTSD is a very common thing for survivors. Mm. Yeah, so you know. Good. Remember at this point, I have deferred more than four times. You know, it took me eight years to do a four-year course. Eight years? Oh, are you able to finish? Yeah, I'm ah. finishing next year. Oh, no. oh next, next year. year. Next yeah. year. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, nice. So it's, it's getting tougher by the day. Mm. You, you really want to fit in into a life that doesn't really accommodate you. Mm. But you tell yourself, I mean, these things happen. Yeah talk to people, not necessarily cancer, yeah. people going through their lives, and you, you realize that these things are happening to people. Yeah. It's not just me alone. Mm. Yeah, so you just try, you just try, and then 2019, it came back, it was spreading worse, mm. now I had blood cancer. When you have cancer and then it spreads for another place, it's still the same liver cancer. Okay. Yeah, but with spreading metastasis, yeah. it's still the same, the same cancer. So it's aggressive. I'm still caught up in the feeling of I'm too bad in some two people. Mm. I've asked for people so much. So we tried the fun drive that I was telling you about. Ah, uh, yes. In 2019. In 2019. Yeah. Uh, and then shortly Corona happened. Mm. Corona happened with a lot of mixed emotions. It was mm. more of a relief because I'd been so used to isolation. When I'm going through chemo, you isolate yourself because of you are at risk of infection. Yeah. Your, uh, your immunity is very low. You're used to the masks. So when the pandemic was happening, mm. it was kind of like, I'm used to this territory. But then again, you look at people, your friends who were once better, who you could run to, yeah. they're also worse hit than you. True. But then you realize that it, it, it's never lost completely. Mm. There is something that remains. In fact, <coughs> legacy is not how difficult things were mm. or how detrimental things have been for you. It's how you survived that with a lot of grace, with a lot of spirit of a lot of kindness so I realize how people were coming together how people were realizing it's the smallest of things mm. stories mm. remember how people on tiktok really jump up Correct. people were telling stories in yeah. their own different ways yeah. you know content creation and all that mm. and it's the smallest of things mm. so you sit down you have to you know, then you know, the pandemic forced people to spend time with their loved ones mm. you have to be at home yeah. come away with guys Four PM, you go to your own your own places to yeah. do your stuff. Yeah. Now you are told you with your wife and kids, True. with your family. It's the smallest of things. Surrounding yourself with love, yeah. being very intentional every day with your story, and just knowing like any day, any minute, yeah. things could go south. Very true. You know, yeah. yeah. So like you said, everyone is within an inch, an inch, an inch of, of their life. Of their life. An inch of their life. Yeah. So um, it's been. Like I told you, on and off. Mm. It's kind of like, I'm not amp. You can tell a story of life, 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 you can tell a life. I think that is one of the, one of the greatest lessons about, about life oh, from my yeah. journey. Yeah. You have to face your music. You have to size yourself to the music. Go ahead. And there are also valuable lessons in terms of how you readjust yeah. your code, how you... you how you change, really? how you adapt to things. I told you about being vegetarian before. Yes, yeah, yeah. But then when cancer came now, I have to remove yeah. milk, yeah. sugar. Any animal protein. Yeah, go plant-based completely. Yeah. I do 15 km every week. Uh, wh- walk. Okay. Ah. Yeah, every week. Yeah. I do journaling. I do music. Nice. I do art. Nice. And these are things I learned when I was stuck in a bed mm. and there is nothing you can do. Yeah. But with a bed with the, and an easel, you can simply paint. You have a canvas there and painting. Correct. Yeah, you can write. Nice. You can journal. You can pick, a, pick up your phone and call your best friend or awesome. your grandmother or yeah. somebody. And when life allows you, you can be meeting out people. I had 
the privilege to be involved in Africa Cancer Foundation, mm. Faraja Cancer Society, mm. Jijali Initiative, Kisumu Cancer Society, like all these things enabled me to be of use yeah. to other people as well. Yeah. And so as much as it has been difficult, there is also beauty in it. Correct. You know, yeah, so that's basically has been my story. Awesome, man. Yeah. Oh my God, what? <laughs> hey, you guy. Take home is none of this would have been possible had you not spoken up. I don't think so. I don't think so. In it's, fact, yeah. the difference of me being here mm. and not being here is that I spoke out. Yeah. Against, you see, when, when people, the three things I want to talk about speaking out. Mm. One, when people speak out, people often see like it's an easy thing to do. Mm. No, it's not. Because there's a, a mountain of things you have to get, get through. The stigma, yeah. the fear of rejection. True. Yeah. Mm. Uh, being ridiculed and mocked. Yeah. All that comes. Yeah. And then number two, you realize people have been asking for help and they take it for granted. Yes. You see it all, all the time. Mm. People ask for help and then they become so entitled. Yeah. Or they don't manage the, the little that they get. But my philosophy is, yeah. I'm here because people even for go lunch, yeah. for go lunch to support me. I remember when we were doing We Will Win, and even subsequently, people were for going lunch. I remember there was one we were doing, 100 for Mondio Chuka. It was ah. just a, a tagline on Twitter. Yeah. So it was just 100 bob. That's kind oh. of like a lunch. Oh, wait a minute. I saw that. Yes, yes. Oh, that was you. That was me. That ah, was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it somewhere. So when people show you that kind of grace, mm. you have to be really grateful, but also you have to find a space because... I have never wanted to be the one who receives, as mm. you've realized. It's mm. one of the things I had to really struggle with to, to get over. Mm. Just being the one on the receiving end. Now, you want to go too. Good. So I wanted to also give back. Yeah. And that's how I've been doing the blogging. I've been doing the talks. Yeah. I also do counseling for, especially newly diagnosed cancer patients. Oh, nice. Yes, so at least you feel like the little, the little five bob, ten yeah. bob, kali kadogo, lichangiwa, meant something. Oh, so yeah, I'm true. here because of speaking up. Yeah. And I didn't speak up because it it, it was easy. Mm -mm. It was very difficult. And, and many times I suffer silently, even to date. Yeah. Because I am also very sensitive to people's own struggles. Really? Yeah. But I don't know your journey. I don't know what you're going through, what Correct. you're silent with. Correct. So I have to be sensitive with, with you as well. So mm. I think I'm here because people also showed up for me and I spoke out. Speaking of which, um, just from your story, I was saying you wingy when you only come through for, for you. You can't name that. You, there's no name to that. I know, man. You you know, know, from all over the world. Yeah. From all over the world. Yeah. yeah. But has there been a particular person who has been with you? throughout that journey from, who's that? Very true. Yeah. My bro Denver comes to mind, mm. my grandmother. Mm. Udur Jagero also has been very instrumental. Yeah. Um, a lady friend of mine called Abigail Arunga. Nice. Like a host of so many people. And a friend of mine called Jadudi, I don't know if you remember him. Jadudi, that name sounds familiar. Had cancer, yeah. And a lot of people showed up for him yeah, as yeah, well yeah. in 2018. Wait, Jadudi passed on. Jadudi passed on yeah, in 19. Yes, I remember him. Yes, remember yes. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these people mm. have been very instrumental in my journey. Mm. Um, like I told you, I can't name them. Even yeah. in fact, my naming of this few yeah. is not is not justice to the to, to them, the others. Yes, true. yes, it's true. Yes. So how how can we be part of this list? We want to make it grow. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can we assist? I think I think this is what home feels like. Mm. Recently, I was writing a music called Home. Mm. I was just reflecting about what home means to me mm. and what it could mean to other people. Yeah. I think I think it's it's kind of like we're walking each other home. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I grow up, when I'm when I'm grow up now, maybe some of them you still have them, yeah. but along the way they join and others also go to different paths. Mm. But ideally, we are walking each other home. Yeah. So I have different ways that maybe people could walk with me home. Mm. And one of them is to invite me to to a place. Let's let's share your stories. Good. And to if you have an initiative, if yeah. you have like I always do volunteering at Kijabe with the, the pediatric cancer ward. Yeah. I teach the kids to paint. 
I also volunteer in various children's home. Uh, so that's if you have such a thing, invite me over. Yeah. You know, and you could also support me through my art. I do painting. Yeah. Uh, I also do music. Mm. Uh, like these things, I turn to for therapy to just ease my mind and also express myself. But they could be something that you could rely on as a companion to your journey. Yeah. So you could buy my music. I have a lot of music. I have seven albums actually right now. Mm. I do painting. If you have gigs that you could invite me to, then yeah, that this could be a part of it. And then also, most importantly, we were hoping that we could go back to India mm. and revive the fun drive that we were, we were that I shared with you. Yeah, uh, it's on M Changa. Mm. Uh, the pay bill is eight nine one three hundred. The oh. account number is Ochuka. If you have anything that you would like to mm. share with me. However little, there's nothing that is so little that cannot help me in this journey. No. I really, really would appreciate your help and support. Uh, Above all, like I told you, I mean, at the end of the day, the reason why we share stories is to just belong with each other. Mm. I hope that by sharing this story, you feel less alone. You feel like you can actually make it. Yeah that you can own up your story and you can look at other people's story and realize that you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Man, first of all, that's a story and a half. Uh, I'm sure there are people out here when you're gonna feel like, ah, this life, man, yeah. but after this story, I'm sure they are considering. Sure. Yeah, you, you, you are a true champion. Thank man. you so much. Because Safi Sana, you keep at it, stay strong. Um, of course, I have a whole battalion of people, but we, we, we are definitely part of that list Thank you of so people please. who have come through for you. Thank you. Um, is there an M-Pesa number that you have? Because pay bills are good, but yeah. there are people outside the country who struggle with, with pay bills. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. You could just use my, my number. is 0727-648-853. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. That's a great person number. His own numbers ziko up on screen. Ben, I'm going to do it. Wah, 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 wah. Eh, kwa caption, I mean, kwa description, we shall also pin them on the, the comment section. Omondi Ochuka Maze, it's been a pleasure having you, man. Mm -hmm. Keep at it, eh, you are inspiring thousands. History mm -hmm. kienda uh, utawana tu. It's, it's crazy. Truly I am seeing the gig juicy for Safcom. Yes. Uh, and actually, I think that's where this whole idea uh -huh. came, came from. Okay. Uh, they've rebranded now from, from Tuaweza mm -hmm. to uh, Two in one. We are there as as a globe. This is not even a Tia Kenyan thing. Mm. This is it's a global thing. Mm. Things are thick for people. Yes. Things are thick. Now we need each other, Maze. To mm. Nigeria, deadly, deadly, deadly. Speaking of Safaricom, there they is this uh, Usa Maria. Have you heard about it? Uh, what Maria? Usa Maria. Usa Maria. They, it's a. Uh, I think it happened during Bob's Bob's tenure. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, where they, they were supporting cancer patients. I oh, would just really like to yeah. really congratulate them. I just really yeah. send up a big shout out to them because that's a really noble thing to reach out. It's it's, it's a CSR, I think. Yeah. But it's very noble yeah. because it's reaching out to many people who are underprivileged. I, I, I consider myself privileged because yeah. there's one thing that I've not noticed toward this journey. Mm. When you have a diagnosis, they go home to die. And oh, they yeah. die. Immediately. Yeah. Ah, kapsa, kapsa. Because the moment they don't even have any information that there's something like Usamaria or yeah. Faraja or, yeah. or Abel. Yeah. They design to their fate yeah. immediately. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So that is also why we also telling this story so that we can reach yes. you know, Safari Comas enhanced. You know net, their network and, and they're, re reach, they're reaching out to many, yeah. to many many people yeah, yeah so we are hoping that this story could reach out to as many people as, as possible, possible so that they know that mm. we are a community Correct. and that community is what actually sustains us through very difficult times yeah yeah you're right man safaricom is the true embodiment of, of the twin one spirit yeah, hey, see, they're, they're everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, but, but appreciate it, Maze, mm -hmm. even for just making time to come and talk to it's us. Good, yeah, last week, but one up to Likula Fire. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. After Polycap story, Maze, yeah. calls after calls yeah. after calls of people just, you know, 
giving up with their uh, mm. on, on life and everything mm. but with such stories na jua sasa tunaenda tukirekebisha hiyo pole pole a story at a time as you see the time ochuka it's a pleasure to meet you it's a more actually ochuka ni family yeah the family maze appreciate it sana keep up thank you so much so sawa na hivyo ndio tumekafunga wadau man i'll see you tukutane pale chini tufanye ile kitu eh wacha tukimbize ochuka india vile inafaa man so sawa It's been real guys adios muchachos peace nice